Welcome to So Very Easy, my name is Laura and today I've got my block in the mail for a block of the month program that I'm doing with Quilting Confections and it is a pinwheel block. So I'm going to be making that pinwheel block today and I'm going to be using the Eleanor Burns 6.5 inch square up ruler. So we're going to cover that and we're also going to cover the block. Now. I am going to make this block just as it comes, but I'm also going to do it in another fabric so we can see what it looks like in another variation. So let's get started with this very traditional pinwheel block with a little bit of sashing. Now you're going to need five different colors for this block. And you are going to need to make eight three and a half inch squares from a dark gray and a black and sort of a medium colored print and these are going to become the pinwheels. The next one is you're going to need a two and a half inch black square and this is going to be a centerpiece. The next is going to be the sashing between the pinwheel blocks and you're going to need a white and black and a blue both the same size two and a half inch by 11. But let's get started and make the pinwheel block. So I have cut eight of each of the two colors at a three and a half inch square and I have put the wrong sides together so the wrong sides are touching. The next thing you need to do is draw a line from corner to corner. Now I've chosen this side because well as you can see that line is definitely a lot easier to see than that line. Now the th next thing you need to do is take this to the machine and you are going to use that line that you drew as a edge, not as a seam, because you are going to stitch a quarter inch down on one side and a quarter inch stitch down the other side. And you will do that for all eight of the blocks. So here was my center line and I did sew a quarter inch on each side. Now what I can do is I can cut down the original line that I drew. And what you're going to do is just lie it down and I'm going to cut right along that line. And now it's separated into two pieces. When this is opened, this becomes your half square triangle. Now if you don't have the square up ruler, you can square it up this way because this square you will need to cut to a two and a half inch square. Now to use the Eleanor Burns ruler, you do not open it up first. You're going to cut it to size at this stage. And you're going to take your two and a half inch measurement and that measurement is going to go on the seam. The two and a half is not going the cut edge, but that two and a half inch mark has to go on the seam that you sewed then you are going to be able to trim off this extra. So I have the two and a half inch mark right along my sewing edge. So there is that little hangover there that you can see. And then I will be able to trim off the outside pieces. From here, since you already have the rotary cutter in your hand, just trim off the little dog ears. It's just going to make it a lot easier. Now when this is opened up, this will be a two and a half inch square. So now you will do all of these the same. Cut them down the center and then you are going to trim off to the two and a half inch mark and trim off the dog ears. Now from the eight squares, cut in half and trimmed, you now have 16 of these little two and a half inch squares. Now you need to take them to the iron and press them towards the darkest piece of your fabric. And in my case, it will be this one. So now all of my two and a half inch squares are done. They're all pressed and ready to go. Now let's put this aside so that we can get the other components ready. Now the next stage to the block is two pieces of fabric and they're two and a half by 11 inches. Now we have the black and white pattern and the blue. And what you will need to do is sew down one side at the quarter inch. So my quarter inch has been sewn. Now I'm going to take this and I'm gonna take it to the iron and I'm going to press it towards the blue side. 
Now that it is pressed, we need to subcut this. And what we're going to do is cut these pieces at two and a half inches. So you're going to do two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, and you need four of them. So all of my subcuts have been done, and I'm also going to put this aside. Now for the center block, we need one piece, and it's going to be a two and a half inch square. So this now is going to make our block. So we need to get the pinwheel sewn together now. So here's the pinwheel block on what it's going to look like once it's assembled together. And at this point, you need to make a decision. Are you going to have the pattern going in one direction, or are you going to have the solid fabric going in the direction? So either one is correct. It's just whatever your choice is going to be. But you must be consistent, or you will have a mismatch of blocks. So let's talk about how to construct this, because it is now consisting of four pieces. Now these two are going to be sewn together and these two are going to be sewn together. And believe it or not, they are the same piece. If I was to take these two and just turn them, you will see that those are the two same units. So what you need to do is make yourself a little pile and put equal amounts on one and equal amounts on the other. And do this for your entire stack. And having them put in stacks like this is going to accomplish a couple of things. Number one, you know that you have enough pieces to match each other. When you bring them to the machine, you know exactly where you're going to put the seam. But the other thing is, is even though you would think that the pinwheel would be going in the same direction on how you sew it, it does not. If I was to have a mistake and sew this seam to this seam, it is not going to have the pinwheel going in the same direction. So take this to the machine and flip it over, match up your seams, and you're going to be able to sew down here in the quarter inch. And you're going to be able to do this for this entire stack, knowing that you're going to sew in this area here. So now I have all of the little blocks sewn together. And put them in a stack, make sure your seam allowances are the same, and at a glance, you are going to be able to see if they're all the same. If they're not the same, you need to make them all the same at this point. Then we need to take them to the iron and just give them a very light pressing. So all of my pieces have been pressed. And if I take four from the top and just take them and turn it, you will see that they're going to match. Making sure your center points are together, you're going to make four of these units sewn together. So bring them to the machine and sew along here. So we have the seam sewn together and when we open it up, we have the pinwheel. Now we have the issue of how to press this. What you need to do is press the seam going in one direction and then press the seam going in another direction. And when you do that, you are going to be able to just separate this little point here. And even with a scratch of a nail, you will be able to separate the couple of threads of stitching. And when it is pressed, it will make a little pinwheel. And it will keep it very, very flat. There won't be any bulk here. Press the four of these, we can get to the next stage. Now that we have the units ready, we can sew the block together. And that is how your block is going to look, but we need to sew them together in units. So separate your units and do them in rows. So you're going to sew these seams together, these seams together, and then these seams together. Then again, you're going to have three units. From there, you will sew this row together, this row together, then you will have one finished block. And we are done the pinwheel block with a little bit of sashing in it. And doesn't that blue just make that gray and black sparkle? Now I did do this another color variation and let me show you the fabric line that I chose. I chose something totally different than the black and gray and this is called Indian Summer and it is by Timeless Treasures. And let me show you the blocks that I did. So here is the same block, but in another color variation. Now I did four of these. 
Let me show you what it looks like when you take the four and sew them together. So we have the one color variation, the second color variation, and when the four are sewn together, it gives you a total different variation. Now I'm going to sew just a very simple border on it and I'll have a table topper. So I have my first block done from my Shades of Grey Block of the Month program. And it is a darling block on its own. It's amazing the secondary patterns that do emerge when you put one or more block together. So here's four and well, you can definitely see another pattern variation. Well, I need to get this over to the machine and get it quilted so I can use that table topper. As always, I will put a link in the descriptions to the Block of the Month program from Quilting Confections, the fabric line from Timeless Treasures Indian Summer, and I'll also put a link in the description to that six and a half inch square up ruler from Eleanor Burns. However, you should be able to get that ruler in any quilt shop that you go to. Thank you for joining me today on So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe and as always, come on back and let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.